everybody, it's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager for McLean, and I'm here today to help you just relax and release and flow into the weekend with our Friday Mind Body Connection. You got a couple minutes, you can bribe your bird with some peanuts, you can get some water. Hey, hey, don't be nasty. That goes for you too. <laughs> don't be nasty. Let's get ready to be nice to ourselves. We will get started today in Sukhasana, an easy pose on the floor, so a comfortable seated position. If you wanna use your block to begin with, to sit up on your block, go for it, especially if you're feeling really tight and your knees are coming all the way up towards your armpits. Fred, that was a triple decker peanut you just wasted. Oh my goodness. Do you remember? Do you remember at 3 a.m. when I was like your best friend? I do. I'm, I'm not sticking my hand in there. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that was a little scary. All right, so if you're here early and you have the opportunity to get started now, make your way to your mat space always encouraging you to make your area as relaxing as comfortable. I can't find my Trader Joe's room. Oh my gosh, that's really weird. I could not find that this morning. Make sure you have some water. There's not going to be any water breaks during class. However, if you need to grab yourself a sip, do what feels right for you. Take as many breaks as you need to. Sometimes just listening can help you to really uh, get the benefits of the change of the breath for class. One minute till the party. Yoga party. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a yoga party. I remember when I first started doing yoga and someone was like, we're having a yoga party at Sandy's house. And I was like, that sounds like the lamest thing I have quite possibly ever heard of. And it took me well over a year, maybe two years, before I finally showed up to a yoga party and I was just like, <laughs> wow, that's a party. All right, so make your way down to your mat. It is that magical time. My name is Jessica. I'm the health fitness program manager in McLean and I'm looking forward to guiding you through today's mind-body connection. We're gonna do a little mini Flow. It's going to hopefully be very attainable for all bodies. The focus on today's class is really to bring some big stretches into our lower body, particularly the hamstrings. The longer that we sit at our desks, the tighter our hamstrings are, ties in with our hips and any discomfort that you're feeling in your lower back. So make sure that you start class off in Sukhasana in a comfortable seated position. I'm going for a perfect pose. It's a little bit tighter in towards the center line of the body, but if you don't want to stack your feet in, or if you find that your knees are coming up towards your chest, feel free to use a block or a cushion and sit yourself up on the cushion to help open up your hips. Whatever you're sitting on, Find some grounding with those sit bones down towards the floor. Relaxation of shoulders away from your ears, allowing your elbows to hang heavy towards the floor. Maybe you even choose to tuck your chin towards your chest, but I want you to focus on creating as much length through the spine as possible. So if you do tuck your chin 
Avoid finding the rounding into your lower back, which can be uncomfortable, so shoulder blades are still squeezed together. We're just gonna hang out here for, for one more full minute and just breathe and be. within the last couple of breaths you started to create some stillness both in your body and your body and your mind so I want you to do a little scan of your body from head to toe and just notice where you might be holding some tension typically we bring and hold our tension in the same places they just it just keeps coming back it's the cat that came back the very next day its name is tension so maybe your cat came back to your eyebrows or maybe you find that you're really tensing your jaw. Take a moment, wiggle or shake out those spaces. Maybe shake out your shoulders. Men love to be earrings. Take any tension out of your glutes. Just be mindful of where you harbor your energy. And if it's not serving you, work to use your breath to let it go. As we continue in our silence here for one more opening grounding minute, I want you to really take in the sounds that you hear in your space or even in my space. Listen for the furthest away sound that you can hear. Great job. If you lifted yourself up on a prop, I'm going to encourage you to try this next one without the prop underneath. So go ahead, move that to the side and work to sit your sit bones back down to the floor. I recognize that it might limit your range of motion and you might also need to change up your easy pose just a little bit to be more comfortable. If having your legs folded in front of you does not feel comfortable for you, explore the possibility of sending your legs out to the side. So take a moment to once again find what's comfortable for you. And from here, we're gonna enjoy a couple forward folds and some reaches to the side. Once again, come back to grounding your sit bones in the floor, maybe even shake them out down there. Find a little shimmy shake into that lower back. Make sure it's still feeling good. And then pull your lower belly in, engaging your abdominal core to continue to keep our backs on the bright side. We're gonna walk forward. So tilt um, from your hips forward to begin with that nice flat back, especially if your back is feeling tired. I encourage you to keep your hands in close in front of you and work to con continue with the length of your spine. If it feels good though, you can walk out a little bit further using your inhale. And if you would like to on your exhale, you can find a little rounding down once you've already created some length. So always making sure that you create that length with as flat of a back as possible. And then if it feels right, you can always come into a little bit more rounding. Or you could even stay here with that length through your spine. Let's take three breaths as slow as you can. To continue to create space, see if you can seat those shoulders down your back. Shoulder blades, I mean. Shoulders away from your ears. Two 
Tune back into your sit bones, ground with the floor. And use your next exhale to gently walk your hands as far over to the right as feels good for you while keeping that left glute down on the floor. Experiment and see how much additional length you can create through the crown of your head. Ooh, especially with your hands ground on the floor once you've found some space in your shoulders, working to create an extra little stretch to the right side will bring a beautiful stretch to that lower back. Take another big inhale and take your time on your exhale. Start to walk back through center. You might need to take another inhale and exhale to find yourself, whoa Fred, all the way over on the opposite side. Once you get there, once again, make sure that both sit bones are in contact with the mat. Find some space, seating shoulder blades down your back, and then work into an extra stretch as it feels good through the right side of the body. Notice if that tension crept back into your shoulders. I know it did for me. So work to find as much release. Create that length again and return to your stretch. We'll take three more breaths here. Feel my heartbeat and pulse all the way down into my left arm. All right, take your time. Walk back to center. We're going to lift ourselves up and come into tabletop. Take your time coming into tabletop. Move any props out of the way. We won't be here for too long before we get to stand up and really move our bodies a little bit more. All right, so hands, palms underneath of our shoulders and your hips as best as you can stacked right on top of your knees. Just find the movement that feels right for you. Shake it out for just a sec. You can give yourself some cat. You can give yourself some cow. You can just shake it out. Oh my gosh. Just enjoy this time away from your chair. Adios chair. Let's come into a little hip opener. We're going to start um, warming up those legs before we stand up and use them a little bit more. All right, so go ahead and bring that right leg forward and we're going to, um, instead of really hinging forward in that hip opener as we did a little earlier this week, the palm of your hand lines up with your heel and you're pressing the inside edge of the right knee into the outside of the right shoulder. So continue to press your hands down to the floor. If it hurts to have your palms on the floor, if that feels too far away, you can always bring your knuckles to the floor. And hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit of a stretch in this right hip. Oof. Beautiful. Now we're gonna walk our hands forward just a little bit, wiggle those toes forward and shift the hips forward just a little bit more. Find a little bit of a squeeze through your left glute and work to bring more of a stretch into the left leg as well. Oh my gosh, just hanging out here for a couple breaths. Start to feel some opening in the left hip flexor, in that quad. If the floor feels really far away, you can always use your prop on the floor or if you need to, bring your hands up to your thigh. We're gonna work into that front leg hamstring. So take your time and send your hips back towards your heels for a little half split. You can stay really lifted here in the half split, especially if you're feeling really tight and tense, or you can keep your hands down on the floor, which is gonna bring more of a stretch into 
your hamstring, and even your calf. If you weren't feeling any sort of a stretch in your calf, start to flex your toes back towards your face. And if you need even more of a stretch with that belly pulls in, you can slowly round down and bring your forehead towards your knee. As you're here, wherever you are, notice if you've shifted a lot of weight over onto the left side, and work to line your hips up just a little bit more. It'll increase the stretch you're feeling through that right leg. That was the sound of my potato being done. All right, change. Go ahead, walk yourself back forward. Come into that big hip opener one more time. Option to allow that front knee to fall out to the side with a little bit of a lizard. And then bring it back in, walk your hands in. Come back into tabletop. Address any discomfort that you might have noticed with a little bit more cat cow. Marv. Feels so good, getting some really big stretches into the sides of the body, even feeling it in those abs and that upper mid back. Let's go ahead and come into our hip opening stretch, starting off this time with the left foot, left foot coming up to the match up the arch or the sole of the foot with the pinky fingers on the left side. So the inside of the left knee is touching with the outside of the left shoulder. Big stretch happening into that left quad here. The more that you really press through your foot into the floor, the more you're gonna also fire up that leg, as opposed to if the knee is coming out towards the side. Let's take three more breaths. Oh, I'm feeling such a good stretch through that mid low back by pressing the palms of the hands into the floor here as well. And then start to walk your hands forward, wiggle those toes forward, coming into more of our, our regular hip opener. Pressing through the right knee back towards the floor, find a little squeeze of that right glute. And if you need to, you can always lift yourself up right here. Ooh, that really brings that stretch today into the back leg quad. Alternately, while you're staying down here, you can always bend that leg and that brings a little more love to the quad as well. Let's go ahead and come into our half split. So start to walk your hands back. Remember, if it's too much for you with your hands on the floor, you can try and pull your hands to your hips and still shift your hips back. You can keep that front toe down on the floor. Focus on the stretch on the hamstring or get your calf involved. Flex your toes back to your face. Either staying really open with your chest or coming down towards the floor. Bring a little rounding in. Make sure you're not shifting all the weight back towards your back bent knee. Great work. Go ahead once again, walk yourself forward. We're gonna bring the right leg up to meet with the left and come into a squat. So I'm gonna gently start turning the front foot out, that left foot out to a 45 degree angle so I can pick myself up and bring that right foot to a 45 degree angle and squat down. Take a moment to really do your best to press the outer edges of your feet into the floor and to let those glutes sink down. Inhale your arms up towards the ceiling Look up, take another big inhale, and rise up, star pose. Exhale, step your feet together, relax your arms down by your side. Take a moment right here in mountain pose. And this is where we're going to start our little flow. So come back to your breath, feet about hips width distance apart, or heels, toes touching each other. We'll just spend one more minute right here in mountain. Take a big notice of what's happening with your body. Are you finding an overarching of your back? Can you knit that rib cage back together to do your best to stack your shoulders over your hips? Head over your heart. Bring the weight back into your heels. Make sure it's not just creeping up towards those toes and hinging your body forward. It takes a little bit of a squeeze of the glutes and a press of the hips forward. 
open up your chest, engage your back. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, you can either separate your feet or just step your foot out to the right. I'm going to separate my feet. As you bring your arms down parallel to the floor, bring your heels in line invisible behind your toes. That way we don't have any twists. So if you have any um, sciatic or other lower nerve issues, we won't be applying any extra pressure there. All right, so pull your belly in nice and tight. We're going to hinge forward at the hips. Keep that eyes gaze down towards the tip of your nose. And then release your hands down underneath of your chest and shoulders. If you need to, you can take a slight bend in your knees. You can even walk yourself forward a little bit more to be a little bit wider. Find what feels good for you. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. We're going to take a nice little twist right here. So. Continue to keep those feet ground to the floor. Explore whether you need to open them a little bit wider to feel comfortable, which is totally okay. With your left hand down on the floor, inhale your right arm up towards the ceiling. Really work to stack those shoulders one on top of the other so that your right ribs are lifting towards the ceiling as well, but you're not splaying those ribs open. You still have them nice and engaged belly pulled in. Pressing equally through the feet. Take one more inhale and exhale. Release your right hand down towards the floor. Replace your left and inhale left arm up towards the ceiling. Really work to open up that chest to stack those shoulders. Finding some length through the crown of the head. Nice little stretch of your hips gently towards the back of the room. Still plenty of weight in your heels. Take one more big inhale and on your exhale, release your left hand down to the floor. We're gonna go ahead and walk our hands over to the right foot. Just take a moment hanging out here, reaching towards that right foot if you want to. You can take a bend in that right knee, coming into a little modified side lunge. If it doesn't feel good to keep your legs straight, and from here, we're going to twist. So press up onto your toes, lift up your heels, and twist to the right side of the mat. Take a generous bend in that right knee. Press up onto the ball of the left foot and inhale your arms up overhead as we come into Crescent Warrior with that back foot off the floor. Really work to bring your hips square towards the front of your mat. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Take a deep inhale. Lift up from your waist and on your exhale, open that left hand back, turn towards the center and come into warrior two. Take that generous bend once again of that left knee, sorry, right knee. Bounce and bounce and bounce a couple times if you want to. From here, we're going to go into a side stretch. So open your arms and bring that right hand down to the top of your thigh and stretch to the left side of the body. As soon as I bring myself down, I take that bend back into the right leg to have as straight of a line as I possibly can, all the way from the left hand fingers down through the left ankle. You can come into extended side angle if you want to challenge yourself and reach your right hand to meet with the left. On your next inhale, lift yourself up, straighten that right leg, keep your toes at the 90 degree angle towards the top of the mat and bring your arms back down to parallel. Take a big inhale, find length from your waist. Your glutes are still squeezed and hips are forward. And on your exhale, as generous of a reach as you can towards the top of the mat. One more big inhale. On the exhale, move your arms, coming into triangle pose. So maybe your hands can come all the way to the floor and maybe you have them resting on your shin. Stack those shoulders as best as you can one on top of the other, opening up the chest as if you're pressing your back, your glutes, the back of your top hand against the wall behind you. Take one more big inhale. And on your exhale, release that hand down towards the floor. Go ahead and walk yourself back through to center. Turn your right toes in and 
walk yourself all the way over to the left side. Take a moment just hanging out here on the left side. Remember both sides of the body are not the same, so enjoy whatever your body can bring to today's practice. On your next inhale, press up onto your toes, turn your heels on that exhale, find a generous bend in your left knee and lift your arms up as we come into Crescent Warriors. So onto the back ball of your right foot. Lots of weight in your front heel, shoulders released away from your ears, hips squared forward, big stretch throughout the back leg. Take another big inhale, lift up, and exhale, open yourself up, come into warrior two. Feet are perpendicular to each other, hands, palms are in line with your shoulders. Inhale to find some big length. Exhale, bring your left hand down to that left knee. Reach your right arm up overhead, create as straight of a line as you can. Might need to bring another bend to that knee. Make sure that it's not coming past your toes, ideally stacked on top of the arch of the foot or maybe the heel. Options to come into extended side angle, so inhaling your left arm to meet with your right, and then stand yourself up. Straighten your right leg, left leg, so sorry. Bring your arms down parallel with the floor. Still have the left toes pointed at a 90 degree angle. Take a big inhale, find your length, Exhale, reach over to the left side as much as possible. One more inhale, exhale, move your arms, come into triangle. If triangle isn't working for you, you can always bring that bend back towards your knee and come into extended side angle. Really open up your hips, pull that rib cage back in together. Think about pressing the back side of the body against an imaginary wall behind you. Take one more big inhale. Exhale, release your hands down to the floor. Walk yourself back through to center. Turn your left toes back forward. Pull your belly in tight, extend your arms out to the side and gently lift yourself up. Step your feet together, bring your arms up overhead. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Take a couple breaths here, back in mountain pose, right where we started. How quickly can you return to your slow, relaxed breath? We're going to do the same thing again, adding on a little extra challenge at the end after that final triangle to come into um, a half moon. Take three more slow breaths right here. Next inhale, bring those arms up overhead, and exhale, step your feet out into another wide stance. If you want to open your shoulders a little bit more this time, you can interlace your hands behind your back. Otherwise, keep your arms extended to the side, keep your heels invisible behind your toes, pull your belly in, and let's find that big forward fold. If it feels good, really bring those arms all the way up and forward. Shift a little bit more weight towards your toes. Take one more big inhale, and on your exhale, if your hands are bound, gently release your hands to the floor and walk yourself over to the right side. Press up onto the right toes, lift those heels up, take a bend of that right knee, inhale, oopsie doodles, come on up into your crescent warrior. Squeeze in that left glute, hip pressed forward, release your shoulders from your ears, take a big inhale, and on your exhale, open up into warrior two. Big bend of that front right knee. Extension through the arms, so open that left arm up as much as possible. Take your big inhale and exhale into our extended side angle. Option to challenge yourself here. Use your next breath to reach both arms out. Inhale, lift yourself up. Straighten out your front leg. Bring your arms down to parallel to the floor. Open up that chest, engage your back, pull your belly in, take a deep inhale and exhale. 
hinge forward as much as possible. One more big inhale and on your exhale, come on down into your triangle. Take a big breath and then exhale, bring your left hand down towards the floor. Shift the weight into your right foot. Lift your left foot up into the air. You can keep both your hands down on the floor or open up that left hand to come into your half moon. Extra challenge if you can, look up towards all five of your beautiful fingers together. Exhale, release your left hand back down towards the floor. Come on back into your lunge. Go ahead, walk yourself back through to center. Take a couple breaths here at center. And then walk yourself over to the left. Take a moment just hanging out in the stretch once again. Hopefully a little bit easier just to reach over to the left side of the body. Use your next inhale to press up onto the balls of your feet and exhale to turn your heels in line with your mat again. Find that generous bend of your left knee, press up onto the right ball of the foot, inhale, arms up overhead. Find yourself back in Crescent Warrior. Release your shoulders away from your ears, leg through the spine, belly tight, big inhale and exhale. Open up into Warrior Two. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Suck your stomach in. Inhale. Exhale. Coming into our extended side angle. Once again, find that generous bend through your front knee. Option to come into extended side angle. And then inhale, lift yourself up. Straighten that front leg. Bring your arms back down parallel to the floor. Use your breath to find some length. Exhale. Hinge forward as much as you can. One more big inhale. Exhale. Coming down into your triangle. Hang out here for a full breath. Exhale, release your hands down to the floor. We're gonna shift the weight into our left foot. Lift your right foot up. Walk those hands forward gently. Get your heel in line with your hip or whatever it feels like in line is. And then extend your right arm up towards the ceiling if you can. Option to turn and look up towards your right hand. Eye gaze back down to the floor. Release your right hand down. Take your time, generously begin to bend your knee. Release your left foot, right foot to the floor. Go ahead and walk yourself back to center. Amazing work. Heel toe those feet back in towards each other. And just take a moment right here in your forward fold. So if you want to, you can bring that generous bend back into your knees, shifting weight back into your heels. We got one more balance move right here while we're standing and then we're gonna hit the floor again. So we're gonna go from this forward fold into standing splits. I recommend having your hands as close to your feet as possible. Uh, if that is a challenge for you, you can always walk your hands further away and go for a little bit more of a down dog. Otherwise, with your hands close towards your feet, gently shift the weight over into the right leg and inhale your left leg all the way up towards the ceiling. Work to bring your nose as close to your knee as possible. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. You know what? Sometimes we fall out and that is okay. Take two breaths right here. Point through your toes, stretch up towards the ceiling. Exhale, gently release your left foot down towards the floor. Shift the weight. Inhale your right leg up towards the ceiling. Bring your nose as close to your knee as works for your body today. Take two big breaths. Use that inhale to stretch up. Exhale to relax your head down. One more big inhale. Exhale. Gently release your left leg down towards the floor. Come back into your dangle. So generous bend of your knees. Super generous bend of your knees. Let's go ahead, inhale our arms up overhead. Come into chair pose. One more big inhale, stand up into mountain pose. Exhale. Belly tight, hinge forward, forward fold. 
and take your time. Let's slowly bring those knees down to the mat. Yay, from here we're gonna go for a one-legged hero pose and then hero pose. So keep that right leg bent. You might wanna even take your hand and move your right calf out of the way and we're gonna send that left leg forward and sit down on the left glute. Work to keep this right thigh as close to the left thigh as possible. That's why it might help to shift gently over to the left side and move any of your amazing calf muscle out of the way. Have the arch slash sole arch actually, inner arch of your foot, as close to your glutes as possible. Take a couple breaths right here. If you're not feeling anything, you can always hinge forward just a little bit more. Beautiful, let's change. So go ahead, walk your hands back behind you. Send your right leg in front to meet with the left. We'll take a moment here in staff pose. So as straight as you can be. Sometimes it helps to even walk those glutes back if you didn't already naturally take a little bit of a forward hinge. If your hamstrings are still so tight and they're screaming at you, take a little bend of your knees here and place your belly on your thighs. So your chest is still open and that back is still engaged. Take one more big inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna lean over to the right side and bring the left leg behind us. Fold it in as close as you can. Get those thighs side by side if possible. Use your hand to move your amazing calf muscle out of the way and then fold that left foot in closer to your glute as you can. Big stretch throughout the quad and also opportunity to get another stretch through the hamstring and maybe you don't notice it as much as you did um, a moment ago in staff pose. We're going to try staff pose again though. So just take a couple breaths right here. A couple's two. Awesome. Go ahead. Send your left leg forward to meet with the right. Walk your glutes back again. Take that bend of your knees if you need to. Can you flex your toes back to your face? Getting your calves involved. So much stretch along the back of your legs. We're going to do one more big stretch before we lay down on our backs. Next up is going to be hero pose. Hero pose. Vindrasana. All right, so coming onto our knees, take your time to come onto your knees and separate your knees, uh, separate your feet. We're going to work to sit our glutes down between our heels. So you can separate your knees as much as you need to, but uh, once we get our glutes down, we're going to work to walk those knees together. So, you know, be mindful. We're not coming into child's pose. All right, so starting to walk those hands back. This pose is really going to be dependent on how tight your ankles are and if you have a lot of issues with your knees. For some people it'll be really easy to sit your glutes down between your heels and if you're having trouble remember you can open those knees a little bit wider. I want you to continue to point your toes directly behind you. Um, it's okay also if your toes come together just a little bit. You want to avoid turning your feet out like we would in frog. So ideally your heels are gazing, gazing, they're gazing at your glutes. So they're grazing upon your glutes. And if you're really feeling troubled, you can keep your hands on the mat in front of you and just kind of use your breath. Maybe inhale, find a little bit of a lift. Exhale, work to sit down. And just hang out here with our breath. If you know fixed firm and you want to go back a little bit further and your glutes have already made it down towards the floor, great. Other important thing is we want to keep those knees down on the floor as much as possible. So we're not coming into that big ankle stretch like we do a lot of times from kneeling. Take three more breaths right here. And then after 
after that next exhale, take your time, walk yourself back up to tabletop. Go ahead, tap those feet. Tap a tap a tap a tap a tap a tap a and cross your ankles behind you. Walk your hands back. Yay! Shift yourself onto your glutes. Go ahead, extend your legs out in front of you. Take your time and let's lower ourselves all the way down. We'll do some reclining pigeon or figure four from down here. Ah. As you have made your way down to the mat before you move any further, really take a moment to ground your lower back with the floor. Hello, birdie birdie. Hello, crazy birdie. You really want to do some yoga with us? Thank you for coming. Keep your right foot planted. Inhale that left leg up and cross your left ankle over your right. Start to open your knee towards the end of the mat. You can stay right here. Stay focused on this big time hip opener. Maybe you're even feeling the stretch through the knee. If you want to bring the stretch more towards the back side of the body into the glutes, you can always lift your right foot off of the floor. Continue to stretch through that left knee though and really notice how the stretch comes towards the outer thigh. Take three more breaths in whichever option you went for. If you did decide to lift up that right leg, plant it on the ground once more and go ahead, twist your legs as tight as possible like you would for eagles. So find some compression of your upper thigh towards your lower thigh. We're going for some twisted root. Extend your arms out to the side and take your time as you bring your knees over to the right side of your body. Work to keep that left shoulder on the floor as much as possible. Just notice where you're feeling the stretch. I'm feeling this today big time through those abs. I'm just trying to remember what we did yesterday. Oh, you know what? I went to Kenley's class this morning as well, so there was some extra ab work. It's that hollow body hold. It's murderous. Take your time, move with intention. We're gonna roll onto our backs once more. Go ahead, inhale that left leg all the way up towards the ceiling. Make some circles with your ankle in one direction. Even work to bring that knee a little closer to your nose. One last stretch on the hamstring. Change direction of your toe circles, of your ankle circles. And then take your time, release your left leg down towards the floor. Inhale that right leg up, cross it over the left, and then open the outside of the knee to the back of the mat. And you can continue to hang out right here and focus on your hip opener through the right side of the body, or if you want to bring the stretch once again to the back of the leg, oof, ooh, ooh. feeling tight, 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 wow, now. You can draw your left knee to your chest. Tight, 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 doo, doo. Oh my gosh, it really is feeling so tight. I wonder if y'all are feeling this at home. Fred's coming down to let me know. She feels it. Continue to stretch through the outside of your knee to the end of the mat, however you have your left foot. On your next exhale, if it's not already there, release the left foot to the floor and deeply squeeze the back of the right thigh into the top of the left. Extend your arms out to the side, press into your foot, lift yourself up and twist your roots to the opposite side. Oof. Create as much stretch through your shoulder and hip as possible as you twist your spine. If any of these stretches feel beyond amazing. Remember, you can come back to them throughout the day.
take your time, slowly, gently roll onto your back once more. Last stretch through the right leg, all the way up towards the ceiling, maybe even a little towards your nose. Make some circles with your ankle in one direction. Make some circles with your ankle in the opposite direction. Take your time, release your right foot down towards the floor. Go ahead, extend your legs out in front of you all the way. We'll take three final minutes here in Savasana. You can open your arms as wide as you want. You can open your legs as wide as you want, but find a comfortable position so that you actually relax here for the next three minutes as much as possible. Savasana also means corpse pose. So really come into your stillness and that's where you'll find the benefits, just allowing freshly oxygenated blood through today's practice to soar through your body, helping to clear up any tension, discomfort, scar tissue. Just continuing to move your amazing chi and energy throughout your body. So you feel your best. Take this time to reflect on why you came to class today. Notice how you're feeling. The same, better, worse. Just notice however you feel. That's totally okay. And you're entitled to those feelings. Showing up is the challenge. So whatever your body did today, however you feel, whether you thought it was the most amazing practice, or it was really hard for you. I'm sure whatever you did was enough because your best is always enough. You're welcome to stay here in this final savasana as long as you would like. The longer the better. Stay here till your mind is quiet. If you're already there, or you just need to end practice and move on with your day, you are welcome to take your time and make your way to a seated position, and we will close out class together. your sit bones with the floor once more. Contract your core and bring your hands palms to the center of your chest in Namaskar with your thumbs touching on your sternum. Tuck your chin to your chest. Take a moment to thank yourself, to honor yourself for today's practice. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that I said or we did, please reach out. Till you see me again, I hope that you will think good thoughts, speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, and all the things it takes to nourish ourselves from the inside to the out. If it feels right for you, you can bring your thumb to your third eye, to your drishti. Grab your sit bones, lift your elbows and your amazing face up towards the sky. Open up your heart once more. I know that the light within me honors, sees, and is so thankful for the light within you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.